So our prayers will change when you understand you're speaking from the finished work of Christ. So the same way with healing. You may find in the Old Testament where they begged God to heal and then he moved in compassion. But today we see that the work is done and complete. You don't have to ask God to heal anymore. He's now put that authority and power in your hand. Hello, my dear friend. Welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Alan Bagg. Today we're going to have a look at walking in and the confession of healing by faith. You know, healing is available to each and every one of us. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. And it's not just the hearing of faith. It's also the action and the walking of it that we see our faith and healing manifest. Yes, growing up in faith, I struggled with some symptoms, but I was able to take the word, apply it, walk in it, and receive my healing from God. So let's join Dad as he teaches us some more principles. We can learn from Psalms and we can learn from the prayers of the prophets of old, but you must understand that they spoke from the knowledge that redemption was still coming. Today, you and I have been redeemed. We speak from the status of a finished work on the cross. So in the Old Testament, they would say things like, you know, please don't leave me. Today we found out that once you're born again, God enters your heart. He never leaves you nor forsakes you. Please touch me. God's touching you all the time. Come on now. Are you getting a hold of this? He's right there with you. Now you may not always feel it, but that's what faith is. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So in the old covenant, they would be asking and begging and they would tear their clothes and they would fast to try and prove to God, are you with me? But today, praise God, we are redeemed. You are born again. Jesus finished the work on the cross. On that cross, he paid for your salvation in full. You don't have to sacrifice not one more goat, not one more sheep. You are, you're, the blood of Jesus forever stands as testimony that you are forgiven. Amen. Amen. It ever lives to speak. Jesus is your intercessor. He's the eternal sacrifice. Praise God. So we don't have to beg God for His forgiveness. He has forgiven us. Hallelujah. Amen. How are we forgiven? Receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. The moment you do, you're forgiven. You're made the righteousness of God. If we do sin, you just confess that sin. That blood is just as powerful. Forgives you immediately. Cleansed of unrighteousness. So our prayers will change. When you understand you're speaking from the finished work of Christ. So the same way with healing. You may find in the Old Testament where they begged God to heal and then he moved in compassion. But today we see that the work is done and complete. You don't have to ask God to heal anymore. He's now put that authority and power in your hand. Now just to very quickly read some scriptures because as I said I took some time. And I want to get to the next phase of this teaching. Matthew chapter 10, verse 12, Jesus sent out his disciples and commanded them saying, Do not go in the way of the Gentiles and do not enter the city of Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Now today, we have no problem as Christians with understanding we have the authority to cast out demons. 
Once you understand the power that God's put in you, you can tell a demon to leave, and it has to listen. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. James 4, 7. Is that the promise of the word? Yes, sir. And in that same statement, Jesus said, heal the sick. Now, why would he say that? Well, in verse 1, he said that he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of diseases. So they were given the power to heal. Amen. Luke chapter 9, verse 1, he called his 12 disciples together. He gave them power and authority over all demons and power to cure diseases. Lift your hand and say, in the same breath that Jesus gives me power to cast out demons, he gives me power to cure diseases. And you look at his instruction, verse 2, he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Now, how many of you are preaching the kingdom of God? How many of you talk to friends? Now, you may not have to, you may not stand up on a pulpit with a microphone and preach the way you understand I'm preaching, but how many of you have sat with somebody and told them how great God is, how much He loves them, how much He desires for them to be saved? That's preaching the kingdom of God. That's preaching the kingdom of God. Now, we do that. Amen. You did that. Why? Because you have authority. Go make disciples. Okay. And you went. And some of us have led people to Jesus already. If you haven't, you will by the end of the year. You will lead someone to Jesus. Because of what you say, because of how you live your life, someone will be attracted. You're preaching the gospel. Now the same way, if you see someone sick, you have authority to heal that. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You getting this? Come to James chapter 5. If, is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord, Jesus. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. That's good news, isn't it? Now, we learned last week that the prayer of faith is not the same as the prayer of petition. The prayer of petition where Jesus said, whatever things you ask for when you pray, believe you receive them, you will have them. There are sometimes things that we do need to ask for. Now, your Heavenly Father knows what you need before you ask, but He says we must ask. You have not because you ask not. So the prayer of petition is based in faith. Whatever we do, if we're going to give, it's in faith. If we're going to sing, it's in faith. Even if you and I fellowship together, that's by faith. We love by faith. We forgive by faith. The whole kingdom of God is lived by faith. However, the prayer of faith is a specific prayer that having believed, I speak. Remember the spirit of faith? Having believed, I speak. Faith comes by Hearing, hearing by the word of God, Romans 10, 17. So where often the faith message is misunderstood, if someone understands the message of faith, they start speaking like Jesus. He'll speak to a tree, no one eats fruit from you ever again. He'll speak to a storm, be still. He'll tell a demon, go. One word, go. People go, you know, they see that kind of authority when, a, when, when you or I do it, they think we're telling God what to do. Like God is still deciding whether he wants to heal this person or not. And we say, you healed. And God's like, excuse me? You making me heal him? That's where people have misunderstood faith. You, you can't tell God what to do. You see, then that, then that person is not yet in faith. Because Romans 10, 17, faith comes by... Hearing, hearing by the word of God. So before I told you you healed, I first found out what God said about it. And according to his word, he says you are healed. So I come into agreement with that. I am enforcing. In other words, the prayer of faith is not getting God to do something because you twist his arm. It's what he's already decided to do. And then you decree it. That's the prayer of faith. And so that's where if we read the scripture now in that context, that if any of you are sick, 
and you're not yet in that place, you may have been asking God, begging God, maybe still haven't got the place, but you're struggling, because you can speak to your body, the same way as I can speak to a disease in someone else's body, you can speak to it in your own body. It doesn't matter whose it is. Come on. How many of you ever have bound the devil from working in somebody else's life? You ever done that? Have you ever done it for yourself? Every time you take a thought captive, you, you recognize, and that, hang on, that thought did not come from God, and it certainly didn't come from me. As a Christian, I don't want to think that way. And that's sometimes where Christians sometimes feel condemned. You know, you think a thought, and the devil gets on your case, like, oh, you're supposed to be a Christian. Particularly younger Christians. I know when I first got saved, I'm supposed to be saved, and I'm thinking like this. Then I realized there is another voice. The enemy. Satan speaking to us. And then I found out from the word, you can take every thought captive to the submission of Jesus Christ. If you don't like a thought that went through your head, say, no, I don't accept that. I take that thought captive to the submission of Jesus Christ. And I only take his thoughts as my thoughts. Amen. So what have you done? You silenced that devil. He can't speak to you anymore. Amen. Sometimes you're dealing with an issue and then that thought keeps coming up. And then you solve it, you just confess it, you let it go, it comes up. Like if you've forgiven somebody, then you start thinking angry thoughts towards them again. No, not you. I know you've never done that. I'm talking about somebody else. So I've forgiven someone, and then it comes up again. And you start thinking, but that wasn't right, and they shouldn't have that. And let me see them when, let me, when I see them again, I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. Uh, no, no, I shouldn't. Okay, I'll forgive them. And the thing keeps coming up. The way to deal with that is say, Lord, I roll that care onto you. I don't have to worry about that. My f- war is not flesh and blood. My battle is not with flesh and blood. That's a demon harassing me. So I silence that thought. I will not touch that with my thought life again. I resist it in Jesus' name. Now what have you done? You've told that demon, get out. I recognize who's speaking here. So I silence you. And in doing that... You have now taken authority of the devil. So the same way, when you speak to a disease in someone else's body, you can speak to your own body. You can speak to anything that tries to take your body in sickness and disease, and the same way it will listen to you when you speak to someone else, then it can happen for you. But now if someone is in that place where they're struggling, is anyone among you sick? In other words, they haven't stepped into their healing. So they've been struggling. Then call somebody who knows how to pray this way. Who knows how to speak this prayer of authority. And then when they pray, that prayer will save the sick. And the Lord will raise him up. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Remember Job chapter 3 verse 10. Let the weak say. Again. Again. Is that what the Bible says? Let the weak say, don't go by what you feel. Don't go by what you see. Don't go by what other people are saying about you. I've learned that. Even if you go to a doctor, sometimes the Lord leads you. You need to go have this checked out. You need to go because you need some medical assistance. It's okay to go see a doctor. People think now that you're in faith, you can't see a doctor. You know, for example, if, if you have broken your arm, I strongly recommend you go see a doctor. <laughs> if something slit open and blood's pouring out, I, you know, go see a doctor. So if that's one extreme, you say, yeah, well, obviously, well, then there are other places. So don't, don't be foolish about this. But always go not in fear. You go in faith. Know that God has healed you. Now I'm going to go to the doctor. Now the doctor must do his job. If he finds something in your body, he's going to tell you, I found this in your body. That's fine. You don't have to break down at that moment. If he he says, for example, you have this or that disease or this or that problem or this or that, it's like him telling you, you are weak. You say, I'm glad. Now you treat the weak. I'm going to say, I'm strong. Your job is treating the weak. My job is... You see, if you pray for the sick, the Lord will raise him. Too many Christians take the pressure on their own. They're worried about praying for someone because whatever doesn't work. Then they like, they the ones that look like they didn't do something correctly. No, I pray, then God must raise. 
I said, I pray, God will raise. So the same way, when the doctor says, I found this weakness, good. Now do what you need to do. But I am saying, I'm strong. Hallelujah. Now I'm not in denial. Some people think it's denial. There's a difference. It is saying, I understand. You do what you do, I do what I do. Let the weak say, I'm strong. Don't say, make sure the doctor says they're strong. Let the weak say, I am strong. So my confession, my words are vitally important. Come and have a look at Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let the words depart from your eyes. That means read them consistently. Keep them in the midst of your heart. The same way you eat food every day to make sure your nutrition is, is, is upheld. You may eat, drink uh, vitamin supplements. You do that to stay healthy. The same way you exercise to stay healthy. Amens were slow there. The same way you sleep to stay healthy. Yes, amen, hallelujah. None of us ever miss our sleep. Even if it's for an hour or two, you still grab a sleep somewhere. Isn't that right? Make sure you don't miss reading the Word of God. Don't let it depart from your eyes. Why is it so important? Well, Christians are supposed to read their Bible. Yes, why? It's not something you do because if you don't read your Bible, God will be upset with you. You know, sometimes Christians think when they get to heaven, God's got this big check checklist. Okay, do I let you in? Which church did you go to? Okay, that's three points. If you went to this other church, I could have given you seven points. And we got this wrong understanding of how God checks up on us. So, did you read your Bible? Oh, no. Oh. Okay, we're going to have to have a vote on this now. How can you think you can come to heaven if you don't read your Bible? No, God's not checking up if you read your Bible or not on that basis. Sometimes we feel like if I don't read my Bible, then God doesn't think I love Him. No, your love for God, my love for God, will compel me to read His Bible because I want to hear what He says. But I'm not proving my love by doing it. Why do we read His Word? Verse 22, they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. This Word literally is life. It is life. Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are life. They health to my flesh. Lift your hand and say, every time I read the Word of God, I am ingesting life in my spirit. And a spirit that is full of the life of God will keep flesh healthy. It works out into your flesh. Can you see that? Verse 23, keep your heart with all diligence. Out of it spring the issues of life. The fact that your body is actually alive now is because it has a spirit in it. If the spirit stepped out, it's like your battery stepped out. The spirit stepped out, the body shuts down and falls over. And people call that dead. So your spirit in your body keeps it alive. But now people are living in different states of life. Some people are living in death. They're dead. Their physical body is moving, but they are dead. We were all dead in our sin. You give your life to Jesus, you're born again. Now life enters into you. Amen. So you'll, you will tangibly feel it in your body. Now, the more you spend time in the Word of God, that life of God begins to flow into every cell in your body and affects it healthily. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 13, verse 3. He who guards his mouth preserves his life. Wow, wow, wow. He who guards his mouth preserves his life. See, some people go and they just shoot their mouth off. Just say anything, whatever they feel, whatever they think. And then they, some people are even proud of it. What you see is what you get. With me, you don't have to worry about what I'm thinking. That's like someone with a shotgun. What you see is what you get. 
Now shoot, 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 shoot. And the problem is you shoot, shoot, shoot. One day it's going to ricochet and hit you in the head. And that's what happens. We just shoot off our mouths. And we say things that are detrimental to us. Come on now. Did Jesus say we have what we say? So then why are we saying things like my feet are killing me? Hello. Well, I don't know so much how I many people haven't died of their feet. No, I know of people who have got sugar diabetes to a place where gangrene set in and they lost their limbs. And if it's not treated properly, died. So their feet literally killed them. I don't even mean that funnily. It was just it's where it started. They injured themselves, but because the body couldn't deal with it. So we've got to be watch what, watch what we're saying. Amen. Amen. So our speech needs to be flavored, needs to be empowered with life, Amen. with healing. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 18. There is one who speaks like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise promotes health. Some people speak. How many of you heard this saying? Sticks and stones can break my bones, but words can never harm me. That's a lie from hell. Because you know for yourself, people have said some things to you, and it cut deeper than if they smacked you through the face. The piercing of a sword. But the tongue of the wise, the tongue of the wise, the tongue of the wise. Now what makes a man wise? The word of God. So that means the mouth promoting the word of God promotes health. Hallelujah. I mean, we've got many, many testimonies week after week after week where just by speaking the word of God, I will say, how many of you came here with pain and now it's gone? And they check it. And they even surprise us. Y'all. And I, we didn't lay hands on them. We didn't even say be healed. It was just the word of God that was going forth. And it promoted health. Alan Bag Ministries presents Come Celebrate 2018, taking place from the 2nd till the 6th of April at the Bay Christian Family Church. Come and celebrate with us here at the Bay Christian Family Church as we draw near to our God and see Him manifest the miraculous in our lives. Come Celebrate will be taking place from Monday the 2nd of April and will continue with both morning and evening sessions until the 6th of April. With anointed guest speakers and artists, we are in for great times in the presence of God and some powerful faith-building times in God's will. If you would like details regarding Come Celebrate, please make use of any of our contact details. Are you challenged with sickness or disease? Is it God's will to heal us? Did you know that God already sees you as healed? How do we get that healing? In this powerful three-part series, Alan Bagg teaches on God's desire for you to be healed. He sent His Word and healed them. What healed them? The Word. He shares practical ways to help Christians walk in divine health. This is what keeps me alive. This is what keeps me healthy. This is what keeps me whole. It's the life of God's Word. You will discover how to tap into God's healing power, how to receive healing through the Word of God, and the power of speaking healing over your body. That's what God uses, that power that's in you, to heal and to deliver and make whole. Get your series today by contacting us here at Allen Bag Ministries. The confession and action of healing by faith. You see, God gives us His Word, and we receive that Word, and we understand that confessing the Word also brings results. Jesus said, you have what you say. But very often what happens is we say one thing, but our actions reflect something different. 
And it's in the action that we can actually undo what God's already done. So to walk by faith, it's not only the confession, it's also our actions as a result of that confession. So get a hold of yours today. It's going to help build your faith for that. And sometimes there's just that little tweak that we have to do and we'll have the breakthrough of faith. And it's going to help you step into that. One of the actions of faith is that once we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, that we confess it and then we live our lives accordingly. Now, if you've not yet received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, today it begins by acknowledging Him as your Lord. And I want to encourage you to pray this prayer with me. No matter where you're watching, you can pray this prayer right now. Let's say this together. Father, thank you. You gave your life for me, Jesus. You died for my sin and then you rose from the dead. You're alive today. I believe that. And knowing that my sins are paid for, knowing that you have forgiven me, I call you my Lord. You are my Savior. And from today, I live for you, to worship you, to serve you, to honor you. And one day, I know I'll leave this earth and stand in front of you and see you face to face. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God, my friend. If you prayed that prayer for your first time, you are now born again. I want to send you this card. It's going to explain to you what's happened in your life, as well as some guidelines now that you are a Christian. This Bible study program is going to help you read through your Bible cover to cover in a year. And then the CD, My Christian Passport, Out of This World of Failure into His Kingdom of Victory. That's my free gift to you. I want to sow that into your life. We'll even pay the postage. Just call us on that phone number. Write to me at that address there. And as soon as we got your details, I'll send that to you and I'll be with you shortly. Well, that's all we have time for today. I look forward to being with you again tomorrow. This is Alan Bagg reminding you Jesus is Lord. Remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. The Bay Christian Family Church is one church in many locations. With the help of technology and God's powerful grace at work, you can now fellowship with family at the Bay Christian Family Church at our many locations. Many locations, one church, one vision. It is one church, multiple locations. People connecting with people. Wherever you're able to connect, join us here at the Bay Christian Family Church for a powerful time in both praise and worship as well as in God's life-changing Word. For any details on our many locations or to join us via live stream, visit our website or contact us at any of our details. Alan Bag Ministries is making the series that featured as this week's Wisdom for Life programs available to you for purchase. Yeah.